why hello there. Apart from just being away and working a lot on the new Muxen company, uh, I've also been doing all kinds of other projects that just for one reason or another haven't been video worthy. That doesn't mean uh, I haven't been doing anything. I, I'd like to give uh, an update on my granny charger and uh, charging point situation. So what you see here is the aftermath of, well, kind of what you would expect with my uh, granny charger shenanigans, I guess. This is a Shuko outlet and a plug, and they are well, well joined. They've been thoroughly joined together. Uh, yeah, you can just see the, the pins sticking out there. Uh, this has gotten very warm, and this is, uh, if you remember, and if you remember, this is the IP68, so uh, pressure water resistant uh, mains outlet that I installed in my first charging point. Now, what went wrong here, and actually, <laughs> like, this is this is why I try stuff out and do this in a kind of a uh, monitor situation. So in the EU, we all use these Shuko outlets. Uh, these are the standard outlets uh, over kind of a large part of the world, and they are designed for 16 amps. But they are not necessarily designed for 16 amps continuous. The current that goes through your circuit, that's the thing that causes stuff to heat up. The voltage doesn't really matter that much, as long as it's uh, not too high to arc. But the current, that's the stuff that really makes stuff melt. And most Shuko outlets are designed, and most, most Shuko anything, are designed for 10 amps continuous load. And this is why almost all granny chargers uh, with electric cars they are rated for 10 amps, not 16 amps. You have the separate J7072 connectors and the, the Menic is the type two connectors for that. So what's that 16 amp then? Well, that is usually a one minute figure. So that's the maximum current you can reasonably expect to uh, draw from a mains outlet over the course of one minute. Uh, but the RMS value over very long periods of time, that's supposed to be about 10 amps. Now, in practice, um, I've done projects before, and uh, like this is uh, kind of a rule of thumb uh, in the industry. Uh, you can go up to about 12 amps continuous, and if you really push it, if you don't do it for more than like 15 minutes or maybe 30 minutes, you can push 14 amps through these. But 16, 16 is going to melt stuff, except if you do what I did. The real killer here is, as you can see, it's really the heat coming off the pins. And those pins and those contacts are actually rated at pretty high currents. You can do a continuous 25 amps through the contacts. That's not actually the problem. The real problem is the, the contact resistance mostly from the pins themselves, which have quite a high surface area, so they're good at conducting current, to the inner wire. And that is usually like this tiny little grub screw uh, that pinches the wire inside the pin. Now, if you do a fully soldered connection between the pin and the wire, then suddenly all that heat buildup from the contact resistance can travel back into your uh, wiring. And suddenly you have no heat problems anymore. Now, why am I showing you this wall outlet? This is what happens when you've done everything right, but you decided to put a um, meter in between. And the meter, of course, internally does not have uh, enough thermal dissipation to, uh, to carry that much current for like 10 hours. And yeah, it still melted and it got really, really hot. Actually, the meter itself got quite hot. This was as close as I've come to a fire hazard. So after having figured out that uh, the real problem was the contact resistance and not the outlet itself, I um, bought a new IP68 um, outlet <laughs> and uh, securely mounted it again, made it all waterproof inside. And uh, yeah, the old charging point is now basically uh, the same as it was. As you can see, there's also quite a lot of sand and junk and little critters inside, little bugs. That is another problem uh, I have been trying to combat. Um, it is very dirty inside and it does overflow. Uh, really no, no amount of uh, draining holes 
will really resist uh, two days of thunderstorms. So uh, everything inside really has to be watertight. Now, in addition to upgrading my existing charging pit, uh, I also decided, as I said in the last video, to install a, um, a second one at the front of the house. So I have access to the charging point from a total of five parking spots. The second charging point looks slightly different inside. Um, it uses a different style of outlet. And unfortunately I had to do this because right after I uh, fixed up the first charging point, that style of IP68 outlet uh, went out of style apparently and I couldn't find it anywhere anymore. Now, another big update that I made to the granny charger situation is the granny charger itself. Ah which just got absolutely huge. Uh, the original one had about five meters of cable. Uh, I upgraded it to 10. As it turns out, cars are about five meters long. So if there is a car in front of you or behind you and you need to go past it to plug in somewhere, then, well, with a five meter cable, it's just not long enough. So uh, the 10 meter cable has already come in very handy in a bunch of occasions. Uh, I highly recommend like at least 8 meters, probably 9 meters of cable for any granny charger. I don't know why they give you less. I guess it's because of the, the really thick cables they use. Now obviously uh, this granny charger now has a different plug. I decided to forego the, uh, the IP68 pressure water tight plug because honestly it really hasn't done us much good. It's quite cumbersome. Uh, and it was yeah, it was just very fiddly to use and honestly um, If you're gonna use a Shuko anywhere uh, You're not going to use it in a like a place where you need to have a flooded connector uh, That's not going to be safe even with the IP68 one so um, Decided to go for just a box standard one and this one of course has the soldered connections you can actually tell um, the uh, the plastic like the pins have kind of been bent out of place. That's because the the plastic sort of slightly melted while soldering them in. Uh, I still need to find like a better plug to do this to. And the other end got a little bit of an upgrade too. And this is something that I've been working on. Uh, it seems like all of August, but uh, still not quite done. And I really want to start selling this. And that is the upgraded electronics. So in the uh, previous video on the granny charger, you saw that it's quite a mess inside. There's a lot of little wires and thingies. It's a real prototype. And I've uh, upgraded this to uh, this electronics, which is way, way smaller and way more compact. And it actually fits inside like in one go with uh, much, much less cabling and wiring and now, in addition to just being easier and safer to install, the new electronics also uh, can switch currents, which was actually something I wanted to put in in the original electronics, but never got around to it. So the new one, if you um, if you enable the electronics, so if you just plug it into the mains, but you don't connect it to the car, and you press this button <laughs> within a couple of seconds of it starting up, it goes into configuration mode and uh, you're able to, with each button press, increase the current by two amps. And it will store that. So the next time you use your granny charger, it will start pulling that amount of current uh, that you programmed in. Um, yeah, it's really too bad. I don't quite have the time right now to, um, to show you the program in action, but uh, uh, I'll be using this for the next like two weeks or so and in about two and a half three weeks i'll do an update with the new electronics and i will start uh selling this uh this electronics obviously at your own risk not quite j7072 compliant but yeah this will be finished electronics now so yeah that's the the granny charger update uh obviously there will be a second update like a final update on the granny charger and when uh, Muxon is all up and running, we'll probably be uh, selling completed granny charges, uh, everything included, for some kind of competitive price. Uh, I, I intend to sell all kinds of little add-ons, little things that I use that make the, uh, the leaf 
just a better car. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and uh, see you in the next video.